Autodesk is making changes to the personal plan of Fusion 360 and everyone's freaking out about it. I've been getting messages over the last few days with ridiculous requests like, oh Angus, you should delete all of your Fusion 360 tutorials because you've given them free business and this is this is terrible. And also, oh, Autodesk must be losing so much money, they're now trying to make us pay for it, which is ridiculous. So I thought I'd make a video going through the actual changes of the Fusion 360 personal plan and what I think about it and some alternatives if you really feel a need to jump ship. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. So yes, shocker, Fusion 360 is becoming more restricted on the free personal plan. And look, you should have kind of seen this coming. No business survives by not making money. And Fusion 360 has been free for a long time and open to create that community and get people into the product that they can eventually hopefully convert into paying customers. This is a tried and true technique. For example, SolidWorks is often made available for free to educational students like at university, I learned SolidWorks, I had access to it for free. As soon as I graduated, that went away. And if I went to a company, I knew how to use SolidWorks, so I would kind of want to use that and the company would have to purchase it. And Onshape was another promising 3D modeling program that runs on the cloud that had a free plan for makers. And I was initially using that before Fusion 360 on the channel, but they super cracked down on the free plan to the point where you couldn't have any private documents at all. They all had to be open and freely downloadable and accessible to the public, which was completely useless to me. Um, and I uh, actually, they called me up and said, Hey, thanks Angus. You're getting us customers. Would you like to pay for the service? Which by the way is $1,500 US a year. So no, I stopped using it completely, but I did know deep down that Fusion 360, while it was free and open and changing would eventually start kind of cutting back on the free plan and trying to push people into the paid ones. So let's go through what they're actually changing on the personal use plan. They have a really good blog post here. I'll link in the video description as well if you wanna check it out. And my thoughts and some alternatives if you really wanna change. So in my opinion, the biggest changes to the personal plan are the limit to 10 active documents and the restrictions on the file export types. And if you're doing CNC modeling, they're stopping you from using rapids, which is kind of a big deal if you're doing CNC for any sort of serious work. But let's start with a restriction to 10 active documents and see what they actually mean by that. So basically this doesn't mean you will suddenly lose all of your cloud data and you only have 10 left. They're, they're saying very clearly here, that's not what it means. Instead, it's like a license freezing kind of approach. So for example, what I mean by that is if you have 10 documents and you're working on them and you wanna work on a new one, you have to kind of archive one of those other models and then you can start working on a new one, it's active, and then if you want to start working on another one, you have to archive one of those 10 documents again. So you can only have 10 active and freely accessible at one time. Quite frankly, that's probably perfectly fine for most people. The only thing I can see here that might be an issue is if you're doing assemblies and you want to do assemblies with individual parts modeled in their own, <laughs> their own separate way, that means each one will be its own document and then you'll run into that 10 limit very quickly. So I would recommend here, if you're doing complex assemblies, then try to model all the components in the same document if you can. Uh, you can always export out of that document as well uh, and share them across Fusion 360 projects, but that will sort of help you not hit that limit of 10 active documents uh, so quickly. But that is gonna be a little bit annoying. I can see that why they've done that, that though, because it really does restrict people who are trying to use Fusion 360 as the personal plan, but for commercial use and freelance modeling, because you'll very, very quickly hit that limit if you're doing lots of projects. So I can see why they've done that, but it's a little bit frustrating, but really not as a big deal as a lot of people are making it out to be. What is more of a big deal is the file exports because I feel this is like a technique to lock you in into the vault, the walled garden of Fusion 360 cloud software, uh, which is dangerous. So let me show you what I mean. When they're going to lock down the, the personal plan, you'll be restricted to F3D, which is like a Fusion archive format, F3Z, which I think is similar, FBX, IPT, IAM, OBJ, SKP, SMT, SPD, and STL. Um, now, I don't use most of those formats, they're very strange, but you'll note that a lot of them aren't really very easy to use parametric files. Like OBJ and uh, STL are good for 3D printing, but they're mesh, they're like triangle-based. They will take your file and kind of change it. 
um, and they're not good for changing between parametric CAD programs. They've intentionally removed the ability to export as STP, STEP, STEP, or IGES. Um, and these are kind of universal CAD formats for going between parametric software. There's often the ability of the software to uh, feature recognize these, these formats, and then you can get some parametric ability back into them, but they're, univer they're fairly universal. For example, you could go from Fusion 360 as a step into SolidWorks and vice versa. So by removing that, they're kind of locking your models away somewhat. Um, unless someone makes a parser for like the F3D format, for example. And this one is the most urgent because they're saying the export of step will not be available from October 1st, 2020, which is like really soon, like 10 days time. So this is the most urgent. I would recommend for everyone to take their models and export them as step just to have them on file in case you want to go to another, another parametric uh, modeling software where you can bring those in and at least have something that's good to start from. Um, because that's a fairly good universal format that they're locking out intentionally to try to keep you in their ecosystem. They are saying you can still export as a step file using the Fusion Team uh, browser window, which I haven't really had much experience with, but that sounds like a bit of a mess about, so yeah, don't, don't become lazy with this point, guys. They're also restricting DXF export, but I don't think this is a, as big a deal as a lot of people are making out to be, because personally, I've always used a plugin to export DXFs for laser cutting, and you can still get an, a sketch and export that sketch as a DXF, which is something they're not disabling in the personal plan. Now, it might become restricted in future, but for now, I wouldn't freak out too much about this. You can still export usable DXFs for laser cutting and that kind of thing. And the final point I'll cover is machining. So I don't use Fusion 360 for machining, but I know a lot of people do, and they do it on the personal license if it's just for their own personal use. But the main thing here is they're restricting the ability to do rapids, um, and you're only limited to your cutting feed rate, which means that the, the, the job speed will be greatly reduced because you can't wrap it around places. Uh, so that's kind of crap. I'm, it's a bit of a shame that they're doing that, but that's something to be aware of. You're going to have kind of hobbled G code for your machining after this goes through. All right, so that's what's changing on the personal plan, but what's my thoughts? Well, to start with, I need to mention, I actually pay for Fusion 360. I know a lot of people don't expect me to say that, but it's about 300 bucks US a year. I pay way more than that to Adobe to have access to Premiere Pro and Illustrator. So for the functionality that Fusion 360 gives me, I can expense that very easily. It's not a big deal, but I know a lot of people can't do that. So what are your options? Well, if you're a student, you have heaps of options. You can still use Fusion 360 under the education plan without any of these restrictions, uh, as long as you're a natural student. And in fact, Autodesk has had this, this initiative in place for a long time where you can access like almost all of their software as a student. Like you can access Inventor, which is far more powerful than Fusion 360. It's like industry standard level and all sorts of other programs free as a student. Because again, they're trying to get you into the software. So when you work in industry, your, your company's more likely to choose that software and pay the big bucks. I think with SolidWorks, you have to pay a little bit as a student, but you can still get it. But here in Australia, we, we really struggle to get anything like that. So again, I used to use SolidWorks at uni and we had access through that server license at university. But as an individual student here in Australia, I would struggle to get a SOLIDWORKS educational license, if that makes sense. So that's if you're a student, but what if you're not a student, but you just don't care about people viewing and, and working with your models? Well, again, on shape, as much as I, I don't want to use them anymore, do still have a free plan where everything's open. So all your models are open to the public and can be accessed and downloaded and viewed. And Onshape's interesting because it runs completely in your browser. You don't have to download anything like Fusion 360, but it's a bit like a, a completely cloud-based SolidWorks. Um, and it is quite powerful, but I just don't really agree with it because of the changes they made to the license. And the paid plan is way too expensive. Again, $1,500 US versus the 300 or so with Fusion. I know Fusion will go up in time, definitely. They'll lock you in and change it over time. But for now, that's that's too much of a discrepancy for me. So I don't even consider Onshape for my personal use. But what about completely free, free open source software? Well, there is options. And Blender is definitely one to consider. If you do organic 3D modeling, or you like the interface and workflow of Blender and the thousands of plugins available, it's definitely worth checking out because it is completely free, open source, 
basically forever and has a huge community, heaps of tutorials, definitely worth checking out. The learning curve is steep. I'm not very good at using it. It doesn't really suit my workflow. Again, I come from that SOLIDWORKS background, but it's definitely an option to check out. But if you want something that's more like Fusion 360 or SOLIDWORKS, but for free, you might wanna check out FreeCAD. FreeCAD has improved a lot over the years. I haven't used it recently, but I do know it's kind of clunky to use uh, and it's gonna be a very, very big step away from the interface of Fusion 360. It's gonna be another learning curve. And again, it's something worth considering if you wanna completely remove yourself from this cloud-based ecosystem where you might lose access to things over time or be forced to pay because this is free and open source. It's never gonna happen. And finally, this is a cult classic favorite of the 3D printing community and that's OpenSCAD. Uh, it's like, uh, 3D modeling for coders, it's script driven and you can do really powerful, amazing things in it. I just have no idea how to use it, but that doesn't mean you won't and you might find it perfect for your applications. I've seen this script driven workflow used to make all sorts of cool customizable models where you just change a few parameters and it spits out a new 3D model ready to 3D print. It's really quite cool. Again, I'm not sure how to use it, but there is heaps of tutorials online if you want to check this out. And if you're like a coder, your mind works like that, it might be perfect for you. Okay, let's start stepping out into the world of software that you pay for once and then you have for a, as long as you want. Uh, this is a moment of inspiration and it's actually a sort of a underground favorite of a lot of people. It's really good at designing things quickly, like coming up with almost 3D concepts really fast. That's why it's called moment of inspiration. It's really quick and really easy to grasp. And it costs you 300 bucks US once and then it's yours. So it might be an option for you if you want to do all sorts of cool, quick concept models and you don't want to be tied down to a very steep learning curve. I don't know how powerful it is compared to Fusion 360 and it doesn't look like it's changed too much over the last few years, but I know a lot of people do enjoy using it. And it's definitely worth checking out. Next, we have Alibra, and for years, Alibra used to be like a cheaper SolidWorks alternative. And something really interesting happened a long time ago because 3D Systems bought Alibra and they created this cheap affordable CAD software called Cubify Design and Cubify Invent. It was like 50 bucks for Invent and like 150 for Design. Ridiculously cheap. But then 3D Systems completely abandoned desktop 3D printing because they couldn't cut it. Shock horror, it was harder than they thought. Um, and they killed it all off. So Alibra kind of reclaimed the assets from what I understand and they repackaged that Cubify Design software again into something called uh, Atom 3D. Now I did check this out a little while ago and um, it just wasn't up to date enough for my liking. It was a bit too clunky. Coming from Fusion 360 was really, I felt like I was stepping, stepping backwards. It does all the basics like extrudes, lofts, uh, sweeps, and Boolean combines and differences and such. It just doesn't really have the polish of Fusion 360 because obviously Autodesk is a massive company and they have heaps of funds to pour into this software, whereas Alibra is a much smaller company and they're kind of playing catch up, unfortunately. But it might be good for you. Check the demo out if you wanna find more info. And let's move on to actually one of the first softwares I ever used, Rhino. When I was designing my combat robots back in high school, I used Rhino uh, to, my, it was my first taste of 3D modeling. And it's interesting because like, I went from Rhino to SolidWorks and SolidWorks was so rigid, like you needed to know exactly what you're doing and then you modeled it up. Fusion 360 is a little bit more flexible. You can change things a bit, but you kind of, you can't just break your feature tree completely or the whole model falls apart. Rhino is a lot more freeform. Uh, it's not so much like parametric, but you can very quickly throw concepts together. Like I would bring in CADs of like drill motors and weapon bars and batteries and arrange the robot design and then build a chassis around it in Rhino using uh, sketches and extrudes and all sorts. And there's all sorts of plugins for Rhino as well to do crazy things like architecture. And I think Grasshopper is like a, a script driven modeler, sort of similar to OpenSCAD actually, that's now built into the latest Rhino, Rhino 6. Uh, it's about a grand to buy Rhino and you have it forever. And I think that's actually quite reasonable for the amount of power that's available in Rhino, but I can't really go back. I'm too I'm too far gone into parametric to go back to Rhino. However, if this freeform modeling approach suits you better, you wanna have something where you can tweak and play and throw your ideas down onto a 3D workspace and go from there, uh, quickly, it might be more suitable for you. And also like a lot of the software, they have very steep educational discounts. If you wanna get it and you're a student or you're in some sort of education, you can get the software for a lot less. Uh, but it's a grand for buying it as a professional level. But that's fairly reasonable in my opinion because other software like SolidWorks and Katia and such just start going ridiculous from like 10 grand up. And then you have to keep buying the maintenance license to be up to date. 
So there you have it, my thoughts on the changes to the Fusion 360 personal plan. Again, kind of saw this coming, was ready for this day. Uh, honestly, it took longer than Onshape did to change and restrict things. But I wouldn't freak out too much. There's still a lot of options available in the free personal plan. It's not restricting you too badly for your personal use. And if you're using the personal plan for business, well, you're not meant to, you should upgrade and pay the price. Again, I pay for Fusion 360 now. I used to have the startup plan and then I just went to a paid plan and it will go up in price over time. I'm prepared for that. It makes sense for me and it makes sense for businesses to run at the, the paid level. But personally, I don't think these changes are gonna be too impactful. And if you feel they are, then save your files as a step and consider one of the alternatives I've mentioned in this video. So thanks for watching guys, hope you found this video interesting and let me know in your comments what you think about this change and any suggestions of other software that you might think people might enjoy and might wanna check out. Uh, I'm also always looking for alternatives, absolutely. The landscape continuously changes and I'll definitely read the comments as well. So thanks for watching guys, bye.